Hello and welcome. India has reported 34,457 new coronavirus cases and 540 deaths in the last 24 hours. This is according to the Health Ministry. And the active caseload stands at uh, 361,000. That's the lowest in 151 days. No fresh deaths due to COVID-19 in Delhi. Uh, that's the 12th time since the onset of the second wave that we've only had 19 new uh, cases. And that's not all. In further good news, in a major development for the vaccination drive in India, India's drug regulator has given emergency use authorization to Zydis Cadilla's COVID-19 vaccine. So under these circumstances, with these numbers in mind, what do we need to do to keep our, to continue to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe? We have joining us on the show again, Dr. Randeep Guleria, uh, Director of the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Thank you, Doctor, uh, for your time again. So first and foremost, that big news, the big story, of course, uh, of the week, the drug regulator giving emergency use authorization to Zydis uh, Cadela's vaccine, which requires three doses to be administered uh, for an individual to be considered fully vaccinated. Now, this is key, Dr. Guleria, because not only can it be used to vaccinate adults, but children above the age of 12 years, they say, can also be inoculated with the help of this vaccine. So, does this mean ahead of the third wave, India could, in all likelihood, begin vaccinating children from the age group of 12 years to 18? Yes, I think this is great news and I think this is great news because of multiple reasons. First of all, this is the first uh, DNA COVID vaccine in the world which has been approved. And this really is hats off to Indian scientists for really coming out using this new platform. Uh, this is a plasmid DNA vaccine which needs three doses and is uses a, uh, a different technology of drug delivery, uh, which is intradermal and therefore it does causes less pain and therefore would be very, very useful for the younger age group. And trials have shown it to be safe and efficacious in uh, children over the age of 12 years. And this should be a big boost because this will help us to expand the vaccine coverage even in the younger age group. And there was a lot of concern, especially with now schools opening up in uh, various parts of the country, that we should try and vaccinate children as much as possible. And this will go a long way as far as uh, the vaccination program is concerned. So you said, uh, as we've seen, this uh, Zydus Cadillas vaccine is the world's first DNA shot uh, against the coronavirus. What is, Dr. Guleria, a DNA vaccine? Why is it such a novelty? I mean, uh, you know, the thought that does come to your mind is why hasn't it been tried before? We've seen so many deaths the world over. It's been a year and a half we've been fighting uh, the, the coronavirus, trying to find uh, an end to it. So why is it a novelty? Why hasn't it been tried before? What is it, a DNA vaccine? So DNA vaccines have been around and people have been uh, working for developing DNA vaccines for various diseases almost for about 15, 20 years. But it's always been more uh, requiring a lot of technology. It's something which can easily be later on modified if need be using what is known as a plug and play model. But what is use, uh, important is that you have to get the technology right. Hmm. It's basically like the mRNA vaccine. It's uh, using the DNA, which is then used. And in here, a plasmid DNA is used. That means you use the uh, a bacteria, which is E. coli, which is uh, where the uh, uh, COVID... Uh, a spike protein and parts of the receptor binding domain is added and this goes into the humans into the cell the nucleus and stimulates the antigen production which leads to antibody formation so the technology is different although it's like an mrna vaccine but it's something which is now being developed and like i said there are two advantages one of course is that it's uh, uh, can be used for ch uh, children also Secondly, the uh, the uh, delivery system is better so that it cause, doesn't cause pain. And it's also easy to modify this vaccine if you need as far as variants are concerned. And therefore, you could come out with newer generation vaccines later mm -hmm. on using the same platform, uh, which would cover for the new variants, which may have developed some degree of immune escape mechanism. Which is what we are needing. We're, like, we're looking for right now with the Delta variant coming up. But so this approval, it gives a boost to India's vaccination program, does it not? Because we've said our aim is to inoculate all eligible adults by December. And as of now, Dr. We've only reached about 9.18% of our population. Yes, so this will add to the number of doses that are available. 
and will help in uh, achieving the target which we will uh, by the end of this year and also this uh, is a huge boost to scientists and researchers in our country that we have the the let's say the uh, platform and the technology to be able to develop new vaccines and use new vac research platforms initially uh, before this before the pandemic india was the manufacturing hub as far as vaccines were concerned but we were not that much into research and developing new vaccines all that has changed in the last 18 months and now we have vaccines being made by bharat biotech by uh, uh, the cadella group by biologically and by various other groups which are actually indigenous indigenously made in our own country and therefore this is a huge boost for research and for scientists shorten the arm for uh, science and technology uh, here uh, talking about a shorten the arm doctor you said this is administered using a needle free free uh, applicator as opposed to traditional inject syringes what is that how can you have a needle free injection so this is basically using what is known as a plunger which actually go gives up to the skin it doesn't go deep into like for example the other vaccines covaxin and covi shield is an intramuscular injection this is what we call an intradermal injection it's just up to the skin and doesn't go deep and therefore it doesn't cause pain and doesn't need the whole needle and syringe that we need so it has an an injector and a an, uh, device which gives the vaccine which is therefore it's easier to for it to be acceptable in the younger age group because it doesn't cause uh, that much of pain as a needle would cause well not just the younger there many of us who are petrified of uh, needles uh, doctor but um i know this is not a reason for a uh, vaccine hesitancy but this could could this also help overcome some of that the fact that it's not an injection is not so invasive yes i think so but i think we need to really push uh, and to uh, uh, address the issue of vaccine hesitancy because although we're saying vaccination drive is doing very well the high risk group the elderly and those with comorbidities need to be uh, covered as early as possible remember we know that they are the ones who would uh, could, could contribute to more mortality mortality is higher in the elderly and in those who have comorbidities we need to make sure that everyone who is in the older age group and who has comorbidities is vaccinated both in urban and rural india so that our vaccination program covers uh, the high risk group and we are able to keep our mortality down All right, doctor. I want to now switch a focus and go across to the big international story. Um, why is, uh, according to you, uh, I mean, is this worrying that Italy and the U.S. are reporting an uptick in cases despite seeing 62 percent of Israel's population being fully vaccinated? Cases are surging. In comparison, the United States has managed to fully vaccinate about half of its population, and there too, you're seeing an increase in um, uh, cases being reported. so that's true that there are two reasons for that one is of course you need to vaccinate more and more uh, individuals to really achieve that so called target of herd immunity secondly you one is seeing what we call breakthrough infection that is people who have either had covid or been vaccinated they are still getting the infection but i think the good news is that if you look at both the uh, uh, all the countries where you are having increase in number of cases it is not going hand in hand with the hospitalization so although the cases are going up we are not seeing a huge surge as far as admissions are concerned as far as hospitalization are concerned as far as deaths are concerned and this is what we are really trying to say that vaccines actually uh, help you from getting from uh, prevent you from getting severe disease they prevent you from getting hospitalization from dying because of covid they don't that much uh, give you protection as far as infection is concerned so many people who have had the vaccine can still get covid infection it could be mild infection or it could be asymptomatic they they will test positive but because of the antibodies that are present in their blood the virus is not allowed to rep, uh, replicate it's not allowed to cause a severe disease and they recover but during that time they are infectious and can spread the disease to other and this leads to the increase in the number of cases therefore even if you are vaccinated it's important that you have covid appropriate behavior so that you don't spread the infection to others and don't contribute to the increase in number of cases and infection going to someone who has not been vaccinated and may get a severe illness that is why both vaccination and covid appropriate behavior are important as we move forward in fighting this pandemic but as we see what's happening in the us and in israel in stark contrast india has 
only vaccinated about you know 10 percent of our population uh, but we're seeing our lowest number of cases reported in what 150 days the question doctor is can india continue to bend the curve or is there another wave still around the corner so i think one thing that is obvious is that what is driving this increase in number of cases the drive as far as increase in number of cases is the delta variant and we're seeing this variant now becoming the dominant variant in many parts of the world, including the US, the UK and parts of Europe. India went through the Delta variant in the second wave. And that is why we are not seeing that surge in the number of cases because we've already gone through that, mm. what the other countries are going through. But having said that, I think it's still imp uh, important that we stay cautious. We need to be very careful because uh, we, the virus is a clever virus, it will mutate, it will develop immune escape mechanisms and could lead to a surge in number of cases. Therefore, having good surveillance, making sure that in areas where there is a surge in number of cases, we have containment strategy in place, we have testing, tracking, treating, isolation in place and we also continue to focus as much as we can on vaccination so that more and more people get vaccinated has to be the key strategy as we move forward. Dr. Kuleria, this week we saw the U.S. announce that they are going to be providing booster shots for all of their, uh, uh, all of their uh, population, basically everyone, any American. And in Israel, we saw the first prime minister globally to take a third shot or a booster shot. Uh, what is a booster shot? Does everyone need a booster shot? So booster shot would be that you take another shot of the vaccine. You, you need the first, which is known as a prime dose, then you need the second and then if you take another shot, which is more than what is recommended currently, it becomes a booster shot. And it's said that your antibodies will further increase if you take a booster shot. Now, there are two or three things. Is there enough data to suggest that the booster shot actually uh, gives you enough more protection than what you had got with the initial uh, vaccine? That was the initial two shots. Secondly, do we need a booster shot just based on your antibody level? And thirdly, what is the implication of it at a global level? So I think the first thing to remember is that currently we don't have enough data to show that booster shots actually give you more protection than what was being given by the first two shots that you took. And therefore to say right now that booster shots should be given to everyone may not be correct. The only data that we have, there are some studies which have given a booster shot based on decline in antibody titer in those whose immunity is very low, post-transplant patients, and they have tried to show that in that group maybe a booster shot may be useful because in them because their immune system is not working that aggressively, the first two shots don't give them that much of immunity and the booster shot helps in providing that immunity. Mm -hmm. But in normal people, that is that effect is not there and therefore they pro 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 probably don't need a booster shot. Third is, what is, second is, what is the degree of protection? Is it just enough to say that your antibody titer is coming down and therefore you are not protected? I don't think we have enough data because we know that be besides antibodies, there is also cell-mediated immunity. You have your memory cells. And therefore, you may not need a booster shot right now, uh, just based on your antibody titer. And the third thing is that if we, we have limited doses, we must understand that globally also, we don't have enough doses to really vaccinate everyone even once. So if we start really giving booster uh, shots to some individuals at the expense of others, then we, it's not being fair in terms of uh, protection to everyone. And therefore, this is probably not the right time to give booster shots to everyone. Uh, and we may also need more data as to what should be the booster shot. Should it be the same vaccine? Should it be a different vaccine? Can, should we a mix and match? Will that help? So a lot of uh, information needs to come in and I'm sure it will come in the next few months. Probably we may need a booster do uh, shot by next year or later this, uh, this year, by the end of this year, but not before that. So you're is implying that in all probability, at some point, everybody will need a booster shot that this virus is not going away anywhere. But, you, you know, you've touched on a lot of uh, uh, aspects of this booster shot uh, issue. It is the hot issue at this hour. Let's quickly go in for a short break. We'll come back and on the other side, Dr. Galeria, we'll just, you know, ask you more questions, go more in depth on uh, this booster shot issue. Just a short break. Welcome back. We're in conversation with Dr. Randeep Aguilera about the booster shot as cases have been rising due to the spread of the Delta variant among the unvaccinated and waning immunity in others internationally. Some countries are running for a booster shot. Is 
a booster shot for everyone and is it eventually inevitable what about india we have dr guleria here dr guleria i know you just said that you think a booster shot is only uh, required for those who are you know immunocompromised the elderly etc etc but the fact is we're waking up every day we're reading the papers we're hearing about how you know joe biden and uh, uh, the first lady are going to get their booster shots globally everyone's going in for that at present the extra dose policy only applies to pfizer biontech and moderna vaccines uh, those who've gotten the jnj vaccine they still don't know when they need another dose but what about us in india do we does that mean i mean are we indians different do we not need a booster dose if everybody else globally is getting one so i think there are two things in this one is is there data and is this the science support the need for a booster dose and secondly is the booster dose being driven more by a panic reaction and worry that uh, your your immunity is uh, waning and therefore you should have a booster dose and will that give you more immunity or better immunity i don't think we have enough data right now to say one way or the other that the booster shot is needed across the board and even when we're talking of elderly or the high risk group we don't have enough data we need to really have a uh, data which is able to tell us what gives us an idea of the protection an individual have what we call correlates of protection what is the protection level that you can see that this vaccine has given and how does that uh, perform over time to give us a, give us an idea that now this vaccine has uh, reached a waning point and therefore a booster dose is required currently that data is not there hmm. but what we are seeing globally is that those people who have been vaccinated as of now continue to have protection against severe disease and they are not we are not seeing a huge surge in the number of people getting admitted in hospitals because of breakthrough infection even in india but also across the uh, globe in various parts of the world uk had a huge uh, uh, surge as far as the wave was concerned a few weeks ago but they did not see an increase in hospitalization and this was despite the fact that there was no booster shot given out there so i don't think if you look at the data there is enough data to suggest that we are seeing more admissions right now and therefore we should rush for a booster shot having said that at some point in time yes we will need a booster shot will we need a booster shot from the vaccine that are currently available should we look at a new generation vaccine which covers for the variants for the booster shot should it be the same vaccine that we got in the past that it should be used for the booster shot or should we mix the vaccine so that now you take a different vaccine Uh, as a booster as compared to what you took in the past these are data or information that we still emerging and that's why i said it will take some more months and possibly mm. the beginning of uh, next year that we will have data which will tell us what should be the type of booster and who should get it first all right so the science of uh, behind the booster shot still needs to be studied lastly dr gulera uh delhi has reported 19 new covid-19 cases that's the lowest since april last year no fresh deaths for the 12th time uh, thankfully since the onset of the second wave given these numbers i know you've been a proponent of this in the past on our shows is there any reason for schools in delhi not to be kept open so i have been, i'm a proponent of schools opening and i think we have enough reason right now to say that our cases in the city are very low and therefore people children are safe and like i've been saying that schools are just not about education they're about social activities they're about uh, midday meals they're about children being able to grow holistically character building and a lot of things happen in school which cannot happen just by staring at a computer screen and that's why it's important that for the younger generation we have schools we can develop strategies where we can look at a limited opening alternate day classes uh, you can have screening being done and close monitoring of how the situation is in that area in terms of number of cases but i firmly believe that we should open schools uh, if the cases rise you can close them down again but at least we should start having physical schools this will be uh, really helpful for students Dr Randeep Guleria thank you for your time as usual a pleasure talking to you about uh, the science behind all these vaccines and the booster shot thank you Bye. thank you